Hi, Tom Iceland here and welcome to First Things First. This is day 14 of Boot Camp, a leadership guide to building a gold standard nonprofit. Today, I'm continuing the series on how to create a get it done culture and why it's so important to define a culture earlier than later. Okay, let's get started. If you're a new nonprofit, you're in the perfect position to build a culture. Why? Because the earlier you establish a culture, the more easily you'll be able to define it, fold people into it, manage it, and build an organization around it. See, if you don't define a culture early on, you run the risk of an unhealthy, dysfunctional, or lackluster culture taking a foothold. When that happens, it's difficult to change a culture because it can infect all areas of your nonprofit, board, staff, operations, programming, you name it. The deeper and more widespread the infection, the more work it takes to heal and to change a culture. But mostly, it's difficult to change a culture because people can be resistant to change, even if the culture is unhealthy. Think about it. Have you ever worked or been involved with an unhealthy culture? Exactly, it's a mess. People can be rude, bitter, disengaged, unproductive, gossipy, you name it. Cultures with attributes such as these can be difficult to change because people can be reluctant to change. I think we all know that it's a lot easier to fold people into an existing healthy culture than to try to change an unhealthy culture or trying to change people. Therefore, the earlier in your life cycle you can build a culture, the better. On the other hand, if you've been in business a while and your culture is a little rough around the edges or your culture is undefined, don't despair. <laughs> there is hope. The biggest obstacle you'll face with an older nonprofit is inertia. People are stubborn souls. They get set in their ways and in most instances they are reluctant to make changes, especially cultural changes, even if the result would mean increased productivity, improved relationships, and an all-around better work atmosphere. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? But this is why it's so important to establish a process that allows you to bring on and retain high-quality people who are authentically passionate to work to fulfill your mission. Because the more high-quality, authentically passionate people you have at your organization, the easier it will be to create and sustain a healthy, high-performance, get-it-done culture. Okay, let's get back on track. If you've been in business for a while and you need to build a culture or change the one you have, it's going to take some work. Count on it taking more time and effort than you expect and count on some differences of opinion and a few headbutts. To reduce the barriers of change, find a handful of respected staff and board members willing to champion the undertaking. By taking this route, you'll find others more willing to follow suit and you'll increase the chances of a smooth and drama-free adoption and transition process. If the executive and board cannot agree on whether to establish a culture, modify the current culture, or establish a process of adopting a culture, hire a consultant. Running a nonprofit is difficult enough, so there's no need to create undue tension. A good consultant can facilitate the process, untangle knots, and keep the atmosphere civil. Once a majority of board and staff agree that it is in the organization's best interest to build a culture or modify a culture, then you need to start the process of defining the cultural attributes of the culture you would like to have, or as I would like to call them, cultural facets. To start the process, you need to assess the type of culture you currently have. After that, you need to determine the type of culture you would like to have, and next week, I'm going to show you how to do both. So until then, create a great day. Hoo